not the little caves, there's a little echo of the This building is owned by the city, the Brisbane City Council and it's actually been here for about probably 30 years and it started life as a housing commission uh, premises and they had lots of people coming in to do all their housing and that gradually it evolved and became an arts and crafts centre with an art gallery about 1998. Uh, it, was, it was quite well received back in the early days, back like last century, it was, there was a lot, of, a lot of activity here and gradually with changes in the previous management um, it, it went into a bit of a decline. People just stopped coming there weren't the classes running that had been previously happening for one reason or the other and back in 2017 it was about to close. It had got that bad, it was about to close and the management at that time did not know what to do with it. They didn't know whether to just close it and cut and run or, um, or what to do with it. And up until that time as well they'd been surviving on a lot of grant money from various sources and now that grant money has dried up. Uh, there was too much um, infighting going on. There was a, it was it got very political. It, it just got it just got so nasty, and um, no one would listen to anybody else. And. You know, they were even doing things like locking up the toilet paper and you had to come and ask for a roll of toilet paper for the toilet. The sort of rubbish that was going on. It was awful. It was just awful. And everyone was feeling it. Nobody was happy. So away we went. We actually went to a... Um, one of our members has got a good patio and we used to go to her place and use that to, to paint on and then we, we, we got the phone call to say the gallery was going to close and they didn't know who to, who to try and approach if we wanted to keep it open so we thought long and hard about it but then we decided that we would take it over but we, we run it as a volunteer as volunteers so nobody here is paid for doing any of this. We first went and had a good talk to the Brisbane City Council and Councillor Strunk, who's the Forest Lake Ward Councillor who looks after this whole area. He was very, very supportive of getting the gallery up and running again. And they provided us with the money to paint the outside of the gallery, which was covered in graffiti and goodness only knows what. So we painted the outside, we scrubbed the floors, we had the modules repainted. Um, so much work was going on, it was, it was ridiculous and, and it was probably about three months before we could have a show and put paintings on the walls just, just to clean the place up basically and there was so much clutter and rubbish in the store <laughs> you couldn't move it, it was a big it was a big clean up we did a lot of publicity with facebook pages and things especially with the local community facebook pages the council's facebook page is great because they they spread theirs to other community pages as well um, and we've got our own website which we've totally revamped and got that running a bit better than it was. We used the satellite newspaper which doesn't exist anymore and they were wonderful, they would always put articles in there for us about what was happening and what, what, what was coming up as well as the local Forest Lake News, they're a little, um, they're a little monthly publication and they'll usually put in um, articles and photos for us if we get their dead get to their deadline on time. So, and and Anastasia's office they'd put stuff on their Facebook page and Milton Dick's the same. So, we sort of basically tried to get into all the community areas that we could get into. We try and vary the shows that we have, and we're focusing mainly now on having shows. We've had, we've had, we have two school competitions a year, 
Um, starting at the end of October, we'll be putting up displays from Manala and for Glenala and Forest Lake High Schools. And that, those artworks are things that the kids have been doing all year and have been part of their assessments. So with the teachers get involved there and there may be Corinda coming this year, but I'm not positive about that yet. And they, they, we put their stuff up like early November and it stays up, no, sorry, early December and it stays up until um, the school holidays go back. So we've always got something on the walls. It's really important that people can see that there's something there, you know. And occasionally we move pictures around so they, they have a look, you know. Yeah. And we've had an Anastasia sponsored a, um, a competition in March this year for local primary schools. And she gave us 500 bucks to run this, this competition. So, and it was year six to year 12. And um, it went really well. So we had all the local, all the local schools involved. I think it's important because it's such a diverse community around here now. It used to be <clears throat> primarily Vietnamese and it still is primarily Vietnamese. And they're a fairly close group of people. It's really hard to crack into that, into their, you know, whatever they're doing. But more and more of the local people are coming in now. And, we've, and there's more and more Africans moving into the area as well as well as other nationalities. It's quite a United Nations around here now. It's amazing actually. And we try and, when we have shows, we try and put things on that are relative to some of the ethnic groups. Like just recently we had um, Paul Sesse in and he's a man from Sierra Leone and he did beautiful batik and um, tie-dyeing fabric art. It was fabulous.